there's a, a new study published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. They found that the Milky Way has billions of planets that are about the size of the Earth, orbit stars just like our Sun, and exist in what's called the Goldilocks Zone, which means, of course, that the planets are not too hot and not too cold for life. They can support uh, water in a liquid form, which is what you need uh, for life to actually come into being and exist and sustain itself. Astronomers using uh, NASA data have calculated for the first time that in our galaxy alone, in our galaxy alone, there are at least 8.8 .8 billion stars with Earth-sized planets in the habitable temperature zone. What the fuck, man? Mind officially blown. Okay. Do you realize what this means? This means it is almost a statistical guarantee that life, in some form or another, I'm not saying, you know, as complicated as human beings or, you know, as advanced or however you want to categorize it or classify it, there, the likelihood is almost, it's almost a guarantee that there is some form of life somewhere else, not only in the universe, but in our galaxy, in our galaxy. Now remember, we are on a planet which is within a solar system, which is within a galaxy, and the galaxy is within a universe that may be, according to some scientists, within what's called the multiverse, which means, of course, there are multiple universes. And the way to think of the multiverse is like our universe being one little bubble in a bubble bath. Okay, the vastness of space is something that endlessly fascinates me and will until the day that I die. But what they're saying is that just in the Milky Way galaxy, in our galaxy, not even the universe, in our galaxy, 8.8 .8 billion uh, Earth-like planets that are going around a star that's like the sun. Amazing. Quote, in the Milky Way, about one in five stars are like our sun in size, color, and age, uh, and have planets that are roughly Earth's size and are in the habitable zone where life's crucial water can be liquid. According to intricate calculations based on four years of observations from NASA's now crippled Kepler telescope, for the first time, scientists calculated, not estimated, calculated what percentage of stars that are just like our sun have planets similar to Earth. 22% is the number with a margin uh, of error plus or minus eight percentage points. Uh, they say the closest sun-like star with a planet in the habitable zone is probably within 70 trillion miles of Earth. And get this, that number doesn't even include red dwarf stars, which also have a habitable zone that's closer to the star, because a red dwarf is when uh, the, the star is older, so it, it's smaller. It's no longer, like, I guess you could say average-sized and orange. It is smaller and it's red. That's why it's called a red dwarf. Uh, and an earlier study found that 15% of the more common red dwarf stars have Earth-sized uh, planets as well. So if you put those two numbers together for the habitable ones for red dwarfs and the habitable, habitable ones for uh, things more comparable to the sun here, uh, that means there are about 40 billion properly sized planets that are the right temperature. Wow, man. Life is fascinating. Uh, astronomy is fascinating. Uh, these questions are, you know, really strike at the core of what it means to be a human being. And as Neil deGrasse Tyson said so eloquently and so much better than I can give justice to, it, it's really amazing because if you stand outside at night and you look up at the stars, uh, instead of feeling like so separate and like I'm this little speck and I'm so inconsequential, I'm nothing, right? When Neil deGrasse Tyson says, no, 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 but you are literally made of stardust. You, you are part of what you're looking at in, in the sky there. You are part of nature. You are that. So you are actually one with that. Now, I know that almost sounds kind of new age, like quasi-religious, but it's not. It's this idea of universality that is something that's actually true in the idea of universality. And, you know, it's something that really... Uh, I don't know, it really blows my mind.